Welcome back. We'll be starting our first lecture on science and it would be class 6 NCRT, the very first chapter that talks about food. Where does it come from? So we'll be talking about the various sources of food. But before that, let's, let's have an insight into why do we require food? Food is required for our daily living. So every organism, be it plant, animal or human beings required food for their subsistence. Now, there are various sources which are the basis for the food formation or the food preparation. Now, let's talk about some of the basic three elements that are required for the food preparation. The first element is availability. Now, let's say if I am living into a coastal area, what would be the most abundant crop here? The most abundant crop here would be rice and therefore, Rice would be easily available and any produce made out of rice like idli, dosa would be very easily found in the coastal areas of India. If I move on to the central India and the plains, you would have wheat, maize as the predominant crop. And since the availability of these crops is predominant, roti or chapati would be the kind of staple food that you would find in these areas. The next important parameter is temperature. Now temperature governs the kind of crop that would be grown. For example, rice is usually grown in a moist and swampy environment. On the other hand, you have wheat and maize or let's say another extremes of coarse grains like bajra and jowar which are grown in arid and semi-arid conditions. So you have a kind of hot environment that is required for the growth of these crops. For example, the coarse grains like bajra and jowar. The third important parameter is the living conditions. Now living conditions, for example, if you go on to the Antarctic, you would find more of animals and animal and animal produce would be a kind of staple food that would be found in that area. However, if you go on to the central belt of India, which is a kind of agricultural based economy or agro based economy, you would find uh, plant produce as the main source or the subsistence there. So the living condition determines the kind of intake of food that you are consuming. So these are some of the basic requirements or the basic conditions. Now we will talk about the regional diversity in the food. Now as we know different areas you have different type of food that is produced. So let's say in India the coastal areas you would have rice, coconut, fishery and where you have fishery you also call it aquaculture. So all those are common practices in the coastal area. In the plains you would see wheat, maize, coarse grains as the staple crops. In the Ganga plains you would find vegetables which are predominantly grown in this area. In the hilly tracts of Himachal Pradesh and Jammu Kashmir you would find fruits as a staple crop. So all these different areas have different vegetation. In the western areas you would have dates, pulses as the major crops. Now, we also need to understand the different areas people have a tendency to consume different kind of food. So let's say in North India as we talked about roti sabzi or uh, chapati and dal are the staple food. However, if you move on to South you would have idli, dosa or products made from rice. Then you would have animal based products like uh, consumption of fishery, consumption of meat and eggs that would be commonly seen. So the consumption varies from place to place. As we said, the food could be classified based on uh, whether it's obtained from plants or animals. Now we have two examples here, roti and dal. Now roti or chapati is made of flour and water. Flour comes from grains, which is a plant produce. Dal, which is basically pulses, comes from plants. Then you have other ingredients as salt which comes from water or ocean. You have spices which is again a plant produce. And lastly you have ghee. Ghee is an animal produce. Milk and all the related products like curd, paneer, ghee, cheese, all these are animal produce. So dal would be an example of both plant and animal produce. Now, some of the people in the world follow strictly a strict diet of only consuming food from plant sources and such people are known as vegan. So they strictly consume only plant sources. They do not consume any kind of milk or milk products. So that diet is known as vegan. Now this terminology is common in United States 
and parts of Europe. And this is a kind of new uh, sect of people who are moving towards to conserve environment and save the animals. So these are the major classifications that we have done. Now each and every uh, thing that we, are, we would study would be composed of different things. So let's say if we have a kind of sweet dish here. So sweet dish are predominantly made of, now this is an example of besan chakki. So it's commonly made of flour along with milk solids. Now since it's made of milk solid, it would be an example of animal produce. And since you have uh, the chickpeas that are seen in this, so chickpeas is a plant produce, so it is a combination of both plant produce as well as an animal produce. Now, the edible part of different things vary. For example, mustard, you have two things that you consume. You consume the seeds. From the seeds, we get the oil, which is known as mustard oil. In Hindi, we call it sarsoka tel. And on the other hand, you have the leaves. From, from the leaves, you have the vegetable that is produced or the vegetables that are prepared from mustard leaves. The next is brinjal. Brinjal is consumed as fruit. Now we will talk about sprouts. Sprouts is a very interesting co uh, concept to understand. So what we have here is an example of a sprout. Now you have some of the raw dal, raw pulses that could be seen here. And these raw pulses, if I drop into a sugar bowl, just listen to the sound. So the sound is very harsh. On the other hand, I have some sprouted uh, the, uh, sprouted pulses here. And these sprouted pulses, if I put back into this bowl, look onto the, listen onto the sound carefully, it would be less shrill. So the sound is much more soft. And again, the same sprout, if I break this into two, since it's a cotyledon, you can see the two sections of the dal that would be clearly visible and these two sections it would break as like this and these two sections would be very clearly visible with a small sprout that could be seen. Now let's understand some of the basic things when we are talking about a sprouted classification. Now sprouts what happen is you have some of the pulses that you take into a cloth and you damp this cloth or moisten, moisten this cloth. What would happen is this moisture helps in the germination of the seed. So you have the seed and this seed would germinate and this section which is germinated forms the sprout. And this sprout is rich in protein. Again since we are taking an example of a moong dal here, what would happen is a moong dal is a dicotyledon. So you would have two fluffs that it could be divided into two and therefore it's a dicot or we say dicotyledon. However, there are some uh, pulses or some grains which cannot be divided into two and therefore they are known as monocots. Mono means single and di means two. So from the word itself, we can say cotyledon means the uh, partitions of the seed itself. So monocot you have one single partition and dicot you have two partitions and from the dicot you have the sprout that comes out. So this talks about this sprout helps in the germination and ultimately from this sprout you would have a small plant that would grow into a bigger, bigger plant. The next is honey. Honey is obtained from honeybees. Now honeybees are a very interesting creature. First of all the population of honeybee is declining and therefore it's a cause of concern. You have apiaries where you have the rearing of honeybee that takes place. Now what would happen is honeybee has a range of usually 3 kilometers and <clears throat> what it does is it moves from one flower to another picking nectar. So honey the nectar can be collected only in the flowering seasons. In the other seasons, you have honey production that takes place. So honey bee collects nectar only in the seasons when there is flowering. Now there are two flowers. Let's say you have one flower that's of sunflower. Another flower that is ajwine, which has a kind of strong taste. What would happen here is the honey produced from the sunflower the whole patch of sunflower would have a slightly different flavor as compared to honey produced from a uh, uh, ajwain seed uh, production and that would have a different flavor. So the flavor of the two honey would differ and this honey would remain for months. Now again 
to promote the cultivation or the production of honey there are there is a new term that is being used and this is known as sweet revolution you might have heard of green revolution and white revolution green revolution was in the field of agriculture to promote the growth of uh, agriculture and the vegetation basically the production of rice and wheat the next was white revolution it was aimed to increase the production of dairy products and then you had the sweet revolution which is of recent and it aims to increase the production of honey <clears throat> so these are some of the examples here now based on the eating habit we already classified the sources as plant sources and animal sources now based on the consumption patterns the animals could be divided or organisms could be divided into three categories those are herbivorous carnivorous and omnivorous herbivorous are those which exclusively consume plants and a common example would be cow buffalo so all this exclusively consume plants and plant produce and therefore are herbivorous carnivorous are those animals which feed exclusively on other animals for example lion tiger they feed only on other animals and no plant produce and therefore they are carnivorous the last is omnivorous omnivorous consumes both plant produce and animal produce common examples would be human beings you have cat and other species that could be seen okay so you have omnivorous that could be seen here and these omnivorous consume both plant and animal produce or eat both plants and animals now in the last exercise we have a kind of list of animals as list of organisms that's for you to solve and identify whether they are carnivorous herbivorous or omnivorous just for your convenience we'll be doing two of those so let's say buffalo buffalo feeds exclusively on plant and plant produce and therefore it's herbivores the next is cat cat feeds both on plant and animal produce and therefore it's omnivore and and so on so the list goes on <coughs> and the remaining is left for you to solve if you have any doubts or any questions you are free to leave those as comment below the video we'll be working around more chapters in ncert science specifically and we'll be moving forward with the higher classes in science as well uh, do stay tuned to our channel and subscribe for further videos have a very good day ahead